July 22, 2011. The debt ceiling is just to get permission to print more money. And it implicates the Republicans into the grand scheme because this would be the first time that they, if they do vote on a debt ceiling to, yes, to increase it, then they can be implicated as just as responsible as the Democrats. That's the number one strategy because it is nothing more than the TARP fund and the AIG bailout and the $787 billion economic stimulus package of February 2009, the actual cost of which might be over $920 billion, just call it a trillion. We the people were told uh, that this economic stimulus money of a couple of years ago was to be invested in shovel-ready projects and uh, jobs, jobs, jobs. One day the man while nobody's sitting around having a job, he goes on TV on a Saturday morning and says that cranes dot the sky. What sky? Other than Washington. I've heard that cranes dot the sky over Washington. Building huge mega complexes covered with fascist symbols that are bound to be filled up in the near future with more little fascists that uh, are filing more paperwork on and researching about me and you. Be that as it may, that is my theory about where the stimulus money went and where it's going to. That the shovel ready projects weren't as shovel ready as we thought as he thought. Of course, he's hiding where it is. Which gives me pause suddenly to think of the fact that if unemployment has gone from just south of 7% around the end of Bush's term to now over almost 10%, they say. And of course, we all know that it's quite a bit more than that, considerably. How then can the media just sit and listen to this president and his administration repeat the inconsistency, no, repeat the lie that they have created two million net jobs. That's what they're saying lately. They've created two million jobs, but yet unemployment's gone from 7% to 10%. What you have is the debt ceiling, which is trying to print more money, just like the TARP fund was, and the AIG bailout was, and the economic stimulus package was, and uh, the, the bailout of Citigroup. Citigroup. A group of cities. I like picturing what people's company names mean, you know. A group of cities. What cities are they? Would they just be, like, uh, groups of cities like every city in the USA, under one bank? Citigroup. Or the world's big cities, all banking with city, Citigroup. Citibank wasn't big enough. Remember when they were just Citibank and then they became Citigroup? Citigroup got bailed out, bought out, pretty much, as did AIG. Two virtually owned by the government or largely controlled by the government corporations, which have since uh, been removed from the Dow Jones Industrial Average index 30 largest widely held stocks in the world, right? Uh, AIG, Citigroup, General Motors, all removed right when the government bought them out. The government buys out Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. They're delisted from the stock exchange. No freaking private investment allowed. Then to make more money, more money, more money, consider Obamacare which will cause the insurance companies to collapse into their own footprints, just like the Twin Towers did on 9-11-01. Only this time it will be an inside job, you know what I'm saying? And they'll all probably fold up into AIG. Probably AIG will wind up with all the marbles. AIG is the American Insurance Group, bought by the United States government, 80% share, buying a $3 trillion company plus for barely a billion dollars on March 9th, 2009, when they bought 80% stake at like 36 cents a share. They barely spent a billion dollars on a $3 trillion freaking corporation, you understand me? And it's only going to get bigger with Obamacare. The insurance companies, the rest of them collapsing, of course, will send financial chaos and devastation and havoc throughout the country. So 
I hope you have insurance for your insurance company failure. Once, you know, you're sitting in the middle of a desert, unemployed and starving, with no water and electric. Consider uh, also the renewing of the 99 weeks of un unemployment checks. They were perfectly timed to intercept, you know, like a, a missile across the sky, the, the Republican agenda floating here like a lame blimp, you know, just like phew, intercepting it, man, by drowning it out some other crisis like Medicare, the budget. The budget, which he submitted following the Republicans coming into Capitol Hill for the first time, where the media, you know, got up in Republicans' faces and said, what do you got, what do you got, the budget, 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 you know, instead of whatever they were trying to do, which was repeal Obamacare and all this other, you know, pipe dream pie in the sky crap, which every, they all knew they weren't going to get passed, because they could all act as conservative as they wanted to. Because they knew that the Senate would stop it. So, and at least Republicans are putting on a show, you know, Kabuki Theater. Whatever the Republicans would answer, they're always playing defense. They're playing the media's game. They want to be liked by the New York Times. So they try to answer the question, and they're like, too much or not enough. And they're, they're always never the right cuts to make, right? According to media and Democrats, whatever the Republicans would suggest to cut or lessen the increases of or stop funding all the other or just freeze... None of it was good, and the Republicans were shooting for like four trillion dollars savings over the next ten years, or six trillion over the next twelve years, or whatever. They ended up uh, barely cutting thirty-eight billion dollars by the time the budget was all hacked up and hacked out and hacked over. Much and the, the biggest part of the difficulty of agreeing on a budget was that the Democrats never even submitted a budget last year, because if if you remember correctly, they were too busy ramming through the, the Obamacare, you know, just pounding it through with Nancy Pelosi's hammer, and, you know, she's pole vaulting guys over the walls into the, into the office windows of their fellow Democrats to uh, twist their arms and uh, sodomize them until they decide to vote for the plan. Even though they haven't read it, they have to pass it to learn what is in the plan, according to Nancy Pelosi. Oh, hiding the fact during that time, uh, the Republicans were trying to bring up that it was going to destroy Medicare, as you know, you know it. The Democrats denied all that, and until this year now, where there's absolutely no funding for Medicare, it's up to the Republicans to find the funding or be looked at as a bunch of meanies and heartless corporate bastards that they're always portrayed as. The Democrats get off scot free, and it is they. It is they, indeed, who not only have seen to it that there's nothing this year for Medicare, but that their plan, Obamacare, once it's in, Medicare is going to just fall by the wayside. It's going to totally change, and it's, it's, it's barely going to be there at all. And they're hiding that fact by, by making the Republicans deal with something now. For the next couple of years, it's going to be useless. 2013, when this plan kicks in, you just wait. So the issue's been flipped around on the Republicans' shoulders like the budget of last year, and the Democrats have not seen the financial maintenance in, of, of the budget of Medicare, and the media voters will see with that no blame at all is placed on the Democrats, who have been running the show since the end of 2006, and totally neglected the budget and Medicare. Now, something troubles me here, though, causing me to question the sincerity of the Republicans, or their will to fight, at least. Why did they never raise a fuss last year about this? Are they just too blind and retarded and goofy? Or are they, like, playing the part of the pro wrestler in the ring, you know, the one who always loses? It's his job to lose. He gets paid to lose. He gets paid to get beat the crap out of. He's paid to talk a bunch of crap. He gets a few good hits in, and then he gets his ass kicked and gets thrown out of the ring into the third row, you know? Is that who the Republicans are? Because they are really making pro wrestling look fake here, man. They're really. Because if I'm not fooled, I know they can't be. These events are all timed by the Democrats to fall into place in such a sequence that they, the Democrats, can, with the help from their, you know, media on TV, they can spin all the events against the cold-hearted Republicans. And the budget didn't matter for two years in a row. And now all of a sudden it's very important. So very important. So crucial. And they had plenty of time. You know, they got voted out. 
somehow they still manage to run things by proxy. Uh, they drown out the Republican agenda with pure abandon, man. Since, uh, you know, once they were driven from power, now they scream that Paul Ryan is the one dumping Granny out of her wheelchair, throwing her down the cliff, like a TV commercial, right? And actually, it is they who have done that. And can you say chutzpah? <laughs> I mean, well, don't worry, neither can I and neither can Michelle Bachman. Uh, and the media loves mocking her because of that, while, you know, Barack Obama's allowed to say corpsmen, and nobody says anything. Corpsmen. Corpsmen. Uh, the death ceiling. Uh, now, it seems to me designed to be an issue at this moment. Obama loves this, this moment. He's working with a bunch of people who have designed these things to all play on each other like dominoes falling one into the other, and it's a sequence of events. They're progressives. This moment has been planned uh, to kill what little time this Congress has. To absolutely just kill it. With which, to attempt to implement their agenda, which is largely an attempt to repeal the last two years' agenda, which is, you know, like I just said a few minutes ago, just boob bait for Bubba's men. They're trying to shift and spin things in a way to make it look like Republicans are spending just as bad as they are. Because the Republicans haven't voted to spend one dime since Obama come into office. All money's been spent by the Democrats, but they're so they're trying to suck them in somehow, make them just as culpable as they are. But if all this spending is such a great idea, then why would anybody have to blame anybody? Why would people why wouldn't people be knocking each other down and take credit for how much money they've been spending if it's so damn great? Because it's not great. It's an evil, terrible plan to tear up this country. War will happen because of this. If not from our other countries being mad at us, angry and wanting revenge, then then for uh, somebody in America saying this madness has got to stop, and then he then he will get whacked with any small attempt that he tr might try to stop whatever he says needs to be stopped, which is which is this. So the Democrats way to deflect the blame. Well, they are responsible for most of it, and I will not be spun that way, of course. And the little guy will always be told that Republicans don't care about the little guy, and Democrats are a party of the little guy, and, uh, you know, the little guy will continue to believe that, and he will continue not to pay attention, and uh, he'll lose it all, and he'll probably blame the Republicans for that. But the Republicans have wasted so many hours and days and weeks running into the response at the beck and call of the president to the Oval Office or to Blair House or to the golf course and they end up getting treated like Charlie Brown, you know, trying to get that football that's being held by Lucy and think they'd noticed the pattern by now. They must see that Lucy always pulls away football, right? I mean, and yet Charlie Brown, the sucker in trouble, and keeps running up to the damn football and President Lucy and the Democrat Party keep yanking the football out of the way and Charlie Brown, you know, flips head over his heels and lands on his head or lands on his ass. Lucy gets her way and that's usually in the form of more money being printed out of there, Obamacare or the Franken Dodd finance reforming monstrosity written by a man who is not allowed to run for re-election because of the crimes he committed that the bill that he's writing is supposed to prevent now. He's leaving office. They let him write, write, write this uh, law. But then, uh, upon finishing writing the law and the law getting passed, he says he can't guarantee that the same thing won't be done by somebody else just like him. <laughs> what evil men. What evil fucking bastards, man, and you just love them. You just love them. Nobody in the Congress is adhering to this separation of powers thing, as they are mentioned in the Constitution. You know, the executive branch, the legislative branch, the judicial branch. The legislative branch is just abdicating its, its responsibility that we, the people, have placed under their charge. And they're going to render themselves powerless to a dictator. That's going to change. Change. The Republicans have been pretty much unsuccessful in pushing any of their plans. They just haven't had the time. They haven't been given the time. They haven't taken the time. Is what they need to do. Take it. You're in charge. Be on the aggressive. 
beyond the offense. If I was a Democrat, you know, I might argue that. Oh, look how the Republicans treated Clinton with Monica Lewinsky in the dress. You know, well, maybe you got a point. Yes, somewhat of a point. If I were Kenneth Starr, the uh, special prosecutor for Whitewater fiasco, I might not dwell on the sexual aspects, which had little to do with the original scandal, which was and is a white-collar crime where millions of dollars were stolen for people with not very much money. And and uh, 20 people were indicted for that, and 13 of them went jail. There might be murder involved in at least one case somewhere, but that was then, this is now, the Stooge media's done a great job covering it up because most people just love Clinton, and, and you know, when I mean, you got a guy like Obama that's so bad that he makes you miss Clinton. <laughs> So if you couple this observation of Republicans striking out with Democrats over something like sex that rivets our attention centers of our brains, it, it titillates, shall we say, drowning out the thing that we should be focusing our attention on, like some complicated money scandal. But that seems too boring by comparison, you know, no, most people don't care to concentrate and focus. Uh, so the... The proletariat pays no attention to the way that Republicans continue along with the Democrats in this regard, the financial regard, because uh, and they don't rat them out because they want to get along with uh, the Democrats. They don't want to alarm the proles, and they don't want to have it put their face up on the dairy and elites with some kind corruption money wise so they're being led by the balls you know because of the uh, lack of attention of the uh, simpleton majority rule voter base mob and so that's why the death ceiling tarp all that is the same thing it's just kind of getting more and more and more and more money more and more and more and more, and more fake money okay this is not the whole ball of wax it's something, the money is not because they want money. The money is, <sighs> we'll get to it.